Many tax practitioners still remain confused regarding the basic principle of taxation behind a fringe benefit such as a travel allowance for using your own car in the performance of your work or the fringe benefit for being given the full use of a company car. In both cases, an amount is added to your income, but you may qualify for a claim on your assessment according to the mileage you did on legitimate business for your employer. SAS fully expects your total mileage figure to be made up of business distance and private distance and SAS says you should only wind up paying tax on the portion of the fringe benefit amount apportioned as private distance. Let's face it, if you're given the full use of a company car or receive a travel allowance and you do all of your mileage on business for your employer, then it is unfair that you should be taxed on this. Likewise, if all your mileage is done privately, then you should pay tax on all of the fringe benefit amount or travel allowance. What happens is that 100% of the travel allowance paid will be added to your IRP5 as code 3701 in the case of a travel allowance and 100% of the value of the fringe benefit amount as code 3802 in a case where you are given the full use of a company car. Certain formulas will dictate the value of your claim and these formulas are based on the business distance done. In this way, although the entire fringe benefit amount or travel allowance is added to your income on the IRP5, you will be given a claim for business distance done. If, for example, you were given the full use of a company car and you did half your total mileage as business distance, then your claim would be half the total amount of the code 3802 fringe benefit amount added to your income on your IRP5. In this way, you will only wind up being taxed on the portion of the fringe benefit attributed to private mileage. In the case where you received the travel allowance for using your own car, SARS cents per kilometre tables will adjust your claim depending on your business and private distance done. Now it would be unfair to tax you on the full fringe benefit or full travel allowance amount at salary source as SAS realizes that part of your day-to-day -day mileage will be on business for your employer. Why should you wait for your ITR 12 assessment to get these taxes levied at salary source for business distance refunded? SAS says their stats show that on average taxpayers in these situations tend to do about 80% of their total mileage as private mileage. So SAS allows your employer to tax you on 80% of the value of the fringe benefit at salary source. This may even be reduced to 20% under certain circumstances, but any difference in private and business distance done during the year will be sorted out on the assessment. The important thing to remember is that 100% of the value of the fringe benefit or travel allowance will appear on the IRP5 and will be added to your total income. Your allowable claim for business distance will be deducted from your income on the end of year assessment. It is basically the same principle of taxation as when your employer pays you an allowance to cover allowable work-related expenses you incur in the course of your duties. What if you only needed to use part of the allowance on the work-related expenses and you pocket the rest? Well, the full amount of the allowance you were paid will appear on your IRP5 and will be added to your income for tax you would claim as a deduction on your assessment the portion of the full allowance that you actually did spend on work-related expenses. In this way, only the portion of the allowance which you pocketed will wind up being added to your taxable income to be taxed.